purpose of this lab exercise is to demonstrate how to implement a CAPTCHA for a web application. And we're going to start with a simple application that has a form. The user fills out the form and it writes a document to a MongoDB collection. So I'm going to get the clone URL for the application. I'm going to clone it. And I'm going to go into the project directory and install the dependencies. And now we can go ahead and run the application. And it's ready to preview. And so as I mentioned before, it's just a simple form with a few fields. You fill out the application and it writes a document to the MongoDB collection. So let's do that now. Let's sign up and refresh the page and there is the extra record. Now, uh, one thing that's interesting about this application is not only can you fill out the form in a browser, you can actually uh, complete the form from a command line or from uh, an application. So I'm gonna go back to the shell and let's open up another terminal. And let me grab the command. So this, uh, this is a use of the curl command and we are gonna do a post and we are gonna pass in the JSON object that is the new document for uh, the collection and we're going to post it to the application. So we're using the ret basically we're using the rest create method um, for this uh, for this API. And I think that's all I need. And what we get back from the uh, rest API is a copy of the object that was stored in the table. So now if I go back to the application and refresh the page we've got that third line in there. So that was based on the information that came in from uh, the command line. And so this might not be the greatest behavior for some applications, for a lot of applications, uh, particularly for a sign up or something like that, uh, you want to ensure that the person entering or the data being entered is coming from someone, not from another application or uh, a bot or something like that. I mean, for some applications, that's fine. But for something like this, you want to ensure that uh, that the information is coming from an actual person. and two ways to deal with that. You can either have someone register for the application, uh, but in some instances it's just good enough for us to know that it's a person and in that instance we can use a, a, a CAPTCHA. So right now uh, any bot can uh, create a record in this uh, collection or a document in this collection, but what we want to do is make it so that somebody has to use the web application and they have to pass the CAPTCHA test to identify kind of as a human user uh, before a new document is created in the collection. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to add a CAPTCHA uh, to this application. And the first thing we're going to do is we are going to use Google's reCAPTCHA uh, service for this. 
And I'm sure many of you are familiar with the Google reCAPTCHA where there's a checkbox where you click to prove that you're not a robot. Google has another variation on this uh, service that doesn't require any uh, explicit interaction with the user. It just identifies that the interaction with the web page looks like it comes from uh, a human user and, um, and the application either passes or fails uh, the interaction on that basis. So we're going to be using uh, that CAPTCHA. It's the, the version 3 of Google's reCAPTCHA service. So I'm going to go open up a tab and go to, whoops, go to that service. There we are. And what we need to do is uh, give uh, a label for it. So this is for our sign up app. And the version we are going to use is the version three of the reCAPTCHA service. So a, a transparent service doesn't require an actual challenge uh, for the user. It just identifies if the interaction uh, looks like it's a person or not. So we'll use the V3 version of the, of the service. We're going to have to add in a domain. And so this is going to match the public domain for the application. So I'm going to go back to our sign up example and grab that. And it's just the domain, not a URL. And I'm the owner, agree to the terms, and submit. And what I get back is a pair of values, a site key and a, a secret key. The, uh, the site key is going to end up embedded in the application in the HTML and uh, the JavaScript. The secret key is not going to be visible to end users. It's only going to be available on the, uh, on the server side. And so I'm just going to leave this window up for the time being. But now we are going to modify the front end of the application uh, to utilize the, the reCAPTCHA service. So I'm going to open up the editor. And there's the application and the front page index.html. And what we're going to do is at the bottom of index.html, we've loaded a number of JavaScript files that are going to provide various services for our application. What we are going to need to do now is uh, bring in the um, JavaScript associated with the reCAPTCHA API. So I'm going to do that. And I'm just going to place it uh, just before where we have our application specific uh, JavaScript. And the one thing we are going to have to change is the, so we bring in the uh, reCAPTCHA API JavaScript. We have to pass a parameter to it, which is our site key. So I will grab that from the reCAPTCHA service. and paste it directly into the HTML for the page. And save that. And the next thing we're going to do is we are going to have to change. So our application specific JavaScript right now, just when the user hits the submit button, it takes the data from the form and uh, makes a, a new document in the in the collection. What we want to do in this case is collect some information about the interaction that we're going to use to prove to the server that the data coming is from an actual person, uh, not from from a bot, for example. So we're going to have to modify the, the client side JavaScript as well. So I'll open that up. And what we are going to do is in this section, so uh, this is the section where uh, when the page loads, 
we set up the, the link to the Feathers REST uh, API. We set an event handler for the form. And you know when they hit the Submit button, we grab all that data and create a, a new document in the uh, collection. A couple things we're going to have to do here. We're just going to delay this a little bit uh, so that when the page loads, we not only do we want the page to be loaded, but we want to make sure that um, all of the, um, uh, the the reCAPTCHA API has finished or is set up or completed and ready to go as well. So I'm going to take all of this code and just indent that a little bit. Well, maybe quite a bit so I can see where I'm working here. And I'm just basically going to wrap uh, that entire block, not execute any of that until I know that the that the reCAPTCHA API is is ready. And so I'll just bring in the code for that. So the JavaScript that we imported inside the HTML defined a reCAPTCHA uh, object or a Google reCAPTCHA object or G reCAPTCHA and it has a ready method and it takes as a parameter a function to execute when the reCAPTCHA API is ready. So we're basically just going to uh, defer executing all of this stuff until we know the reCAPTCHA service is uh, ready. And uh, so I need to put the end for that as well. Oops, I think I took a little bit too much here. Let me just back up slightly. And I just want to make sure that this matches where I think it does. Yeah, that looks good. Okay. So basically we're taking almost the entire body of this, uh, this function and deferring it till the reCAPTCHA API is is ready to go. Now the second thing that we are going to do is the way this works currently is that the user clicks on the submit button and we we check the form for validity. If it's valid we grab the data and create the new document. So what we want to do is change this a little bit such that when the user submits the or clicks on the submit button, we want to collect a little bit of extra information about the interaction and pass that to the create function. Um, and we will validate that on the service side to determine whether or not that, that interaction was, you know, by a human or by a bot. So what we are going to do in this case is we're going to replace this uh, code or actually, what are we going to replace? We're going to replace, oh, this is not indented totally correctly. We're going to replace this, well, I'm just going to replace it. So we're going to replace this block uh, primarily where we create the new object and reset the form. We're going to wrap that with some extra code whereby we get the information from the reCAPTCHA service. And let me just fix this up a little bit.
Okay, so what's happening in this case is user click submit, we check the form for validity. If the form is valid, now we collect that extra information uh, from the reCAPTCHA API, and that comes back as a token. And that token gets passed along into the create method for the service. So we pass all the data from the form that the user has filled out. And in addition, we pass along this token, which contains some information about the interaction with the user and the, the web page. And then that token can be validated on the server side to determine whether or not the interaction was uh, with, a, with a human being or not. Um, and I think that's all we have to change in the front end for now. <clears throat> and then the next thing we're going to do is, um, let me bring up the terminal. I'm going to go back to where the application is running and stop that temporarily. The next thing we are going to do is to uh, deal with this token on on the back end and so right now the um, the the service just creates records as we ask for them what we're going to do in this case is we're going to modify it such that when the request comes in to recreate or create a document we're going to check the token first and just make sure that the interaction was with, with a human if that test passes then we will go ahead and create the record. The way we're going to do that uh, in Feathers is to create a hook function on the create event when we're being requested to create a, uh, a new document and we will do the testing inside that uh, that hook function. So I will call the uh, or I will execute the command to generate that hook function and we're going to have to give it a name. I'm going to call it process sign up. And we want it to go before. So we want the hook function to execute before it actually creates the document. And it is only for the signups service. And it is before the create method. And so that goes off and creates the hook function and ties it in to our application. So now we're going to open up that function. So that is in the source folder, hooks, process, sign up. So the default, this is the, gen the generated hook function. By default, it's empty. It doesn't doing any, isn't doing any testing or modification of the uh, of the data. We're going to have to do a, a couple of things here. We are going to have to uh, on this uh, uh, on this create uh, method. We're going to have to have a look at that token and actually call the uh, backend recapture service from Google to verify. Uh, that token and confirm that the interaction was uh, was with a human and not uh, not from a bot. So we're going to need a, a couple of packages in order to do that. So I'm going to bring those in here. And so we're going to use the query string uh, package to build up the request. Uh, that we are going to send to Google's reCAPTCHA service and we're going to use the Axios uh, package to actually make the call uh, to that uh, to that service. So we need those packages and the next thing we're going to do is instead of so right now the hook function doesn't do any checking or testing it just the context comes in, it returns the context, and then uh, the record or document would be uh, created. So what we want to do is to add some extra code in here to examine that token that, that got passed in and verify that it's correct. So I'm just going to put in the code and then I'll explain how it works. So we're going to just replace this simple return with uh, a bit more work and so in a feathers hook 
the context parameter contains all the information about the incoming request. What we're mostly interested in this case is getting out the data from that context object. So the data contains uh, all of the form fields that the client application uh, passed in. And we're just going to print it out on the console so you can see it when we are uh, testing. And then what we're mostly interested in, so this data, this is another, it's a sub object that contains all the fields from the form. Plus, it also contains this, this token field that we got from the client side, reCAPTCHA API. So just remember, if we go back to the, the form validation function on the client side, uh, we invoke this execute method on the reCAPTCHA service on the client side. It does its magic. It produces a token, which we can then pass back to the back end for, for verification. So that's that's where that comes from. And then uh, what we do is we need to contact the, the back end Google reCAPTCHA API service, pass that token in and, and uh, get some information about that, uh, uh, that request. Is it valid or how good is it? Um, and a couple things have to go in. So that is the URI for the endpoint for that uh, service. There's a query string, two parameters, the, the token that we got from the client. And the other piece of this is a secret that we got when we registered for uh, the reCAPTCHA service. So that's, uh, that's this piece here. And again, the secret is uh, a little bit sensitive, not something we would probably want to hard code in the, in the application. We're going to want it to go in as, a, as an environment variable. So I should set that up now. So let me just grab the secret. And I will define an environment variable for that. Okay, so that will be available when we run the application. So we pass in the secret that we got when we registered, the token that was generated in the client, and we're gonna get back a, a response. And we're just gonna log out all that response data so you can see it uh, a little bit later. And so the response object, it has a data uh, property associated with it. That property has a number of other items associated with it. The ones that we're really interested in are the success property and the score property. So the success property is a true or false. So was the backend service able to validate this token or not? So true, false. So that almost, that has to be true in order for us to carry on. And then the second piece of that is the score. So was it a valid token first off? And then how good was that interaction uh, with the with the end user and so the backend service associated with that uh, token it it uh, creates a score based on uh, how human like uh, the uh, service believes that interaction was with the with the end user so lower numbers are worse uh, not looking like a human more like a bot higher numbers are uh, better so in this case we've set uh, a very high threshold. So it's the score is a value between zero uh, and one. So setting a value of 0.95 indicates we are going to fail interactions that are not uh, highly human-like. Anything below kind of a 95% level uh, we are going to uh, reject. So if it's not able to validate the token altogether, or the score is too low, which is almost anything in this case, we are going to uh, throw an error. So when the uh, hook function fails or throws an error, um, then we won't end up creating that new document in the, uh, in the collection. 
If that passes, uh, you know, if this test is okay, then we return kind of the context object as per usual, and the system will go off and uh, and create that uh, that new document. So that's what we need to do in the uh, in the back end. So I will save that. And I already set the the recaptcha secret uh, variable. Now I can go ahead and uh, restart the application. And looks like I have a little bit of a typo here. Yeah, missing a comma. Okay, that looks more like it. So I will return to the application. Now we've made quite a few changes on the uh, on the front end and on the back end. So I'm going to do a hard refresh for the page just to make sure I pick everything up. And the first thing you will notice is uh, we get this indicator on the application uh, that the that the recapture service, at least it's functioning correctly on the client. So we've got that little indicator in the uh, in the bottom right of the of the application. And the other thing I'm going to do here is open up the uh, console. And let's clear this for the time being. And I'm going to fill in some uh, new data. And I will click on the sign up button. And I, whoop, this looks like I must have missed something in the client side. Oh yeah, I think I forgot to, to change that. Let's go back to here. Oop, yeah. That uh, site key value shows up in two places in the index.html. Maybe I'll just grab it from here. But it also shows up in the client side JavaScript as well and it looks like I missed it. So as part of the execute method, so I'm going to save that <clears throat> and reload the page and try this one more time. And click on the sign up. And uh, you can see here that uh, that uh, there was a problem. So the post is the service call uh, to the backend service to create the, um, the the new document. There was a failure. There was an exception thrown in this case, and you can see the information about that. The message was this recaptcha fail, which I defined in the uh, in the backend. So there's the message uh, there, and uh, and that so in this case the the document doesn't get created on the uh, on the client side. So if I bring this up, there is I think there's a couple of documents uh, that we created. So this is the first one I created in the form. This is the second one that we created from the uh, from the from the command line, but it did not process the one we just filled out. Uh, so that that failed, and there is a bit more information available in the back end here. So you can see I had the hook function kind of log the data coming in, logging the information when we validated the recaptcha token. So there's the data coming in, basically all the data that the user typed into the form the token that was generated by the client side uh, recaptcha API. And then we also have 
log the result of the uh, back-end call to the API to validate that token. And in this case, it was a successful validation. And here is the score. So uh, 0.9 is pretty good. Uh, that indicates, that's a positive indication of a, of a human interaction. But our threshold was quite high. We were looking for a, uh, a 0.95. So what I can do is uh, lower that threshold, say to 0.8, and uh, change that, and it reloads the, the back end. And I can go back to the example application, and I'm just going to re-enter that uh, data one more time. And let's uh, clear the console here so we don't get that mixed up. And then click on the sign up button. And in this case, no error messages in the console. If I refresh the page, hopefully I will get that, uh, that additional uh, record. So everything's working. And same information on the back end. I mean, basically the same data coming in, a new token, the, valid, uh, the validation of that token, uh, successful, same same score in this case, same si kind of uh, interaction. And so that's, uh, that's what it looks like. The only other thing we might want to do is do a little bit better of a job of handling failures on the client side. So we don't necessarily want to kind of just fail uh, silently. Just in case, uh, you know, for a bot, we don't really care. But in the in the situation where we are dealing uh, with an interaction with a, with a human user, we might just want to give them uh, some indication of that failure. So I'm going to ratchet this back up to 0.95. And in the client, we are going to make some changes. So in the... Um, Let us, let me just hide this temporarily in the client. So here we do the signups uh, create. That uh, create method might uh, succeed or it might fail depending, well, depending on a lot of things. But in this case, in particular, whether the token uh, is good and represents a, a human or a natural interaction, or it fails because it isn't. But we don't do any uh, handling of those return conditions, either the success or the, uh, or the failure. So what we are going to do instead is I am going to take this uh, section and uh, what do I need to take? I think I need to take all of this. And so I'm going to replace this with ugh, that. Okay, so what's happening in this case, still call the same 
uh, method create on the signups uh, service, but we deal with the six, uh, different situations, the success and the failure. So on the uh, on the success, what we can do is I'm going to define a message in the HTML in a little bit that's going to uh, indicate that there was a problem or not. And basically, what we're going to do is change the display class of that div to be D none or display none or not uh, visible. And so on the success, we can get rid of that message. Uh, we can remove the indicators that the form was validated, and we can reset the form, clear the form. In the uh, in the error condition, what we want to do is remove that class D none to cause the error message to become visible. So that's uh, that's the slight change to the JavaScript. The other thing is we're going to make a change to the HTML where the button is and above that button the submit button I'm just going to add uh, an error message So um, just a little division above the error message. Normally it's hidden, so it has the D none class associated uh, with it, but this division becomes revealed in the situation uh, where, uh, where the reCAPTCHA uh, failed. Okay, so let's go back to our application and we need to refresh the page. We'll do a hard refresh on the page to make sure we get all of the updated HTML and, uh, and JavaScript. And we'll put some more data in the form. And we'll do the sign up again. And in this case. So you see in the console the post uh, failed because um, the reCAPTCHA failed. I mean because we had set an impossibly high uh, threshold and we've actually dealt with it here. We've kind of given the user uh, an indication of that problem. Not a whole lot that they can do about it. We might want our application to do something different like require them to log in or something uh, along those lines. But in our simple application, kind of, there's nothing else they can do at this point. It just fails. But I just wanted to demonstrate uh, that you can handle those uh, failures a bit more uh, gracefully. And uh, if we go back to the back end and lower that threshold, so put that back down to 0 0.8. And so now I'm going to basically resubmit the same data it will pass and yeah, everything gets clear. The message goes away, the form gets reset. If I reload the page, I should have that uh, additional user in there as well. And uh, that is it. So that's just a, a quick demonstration of how to use a, well, actually one more thing I should demonstrate and that is what will no longer work is that uh, is that command that we ran earlier. So uh, this one, if I try and run this command again, so for example, imitating a uh, a bot, what will come back in this case? So I use the curl command to try and interact directly with the API. Uh, that that fails and. It's not going to be the case that a bot is going to be able to come up with a token that's going to work and pass uh, the test because that's really dependent on having the reCAPTCHA API loaded in the browser and having a real human interaction with the, with the browser. It is unlikely uh, that anybody is going to be able to write a program that is going to mimic uh, the behavior of a human. I mean, not impossible, but the, uh, but the barrier is quite high. So by adding this uh, CAPTCHA to our application, we're kind of guarding our application from receiving uh, unwanted or unsolicited data uh, from 
from bots. That's why we went through the whole exercise in the uh, in the first place. So that's just a, a quick demonstration of how to implement uh, a CAPTCHA in a web application.